Good morning, everyone, and good morning for anyone watching at home. Um, we are continuing on with our holistic admissions with our college information series. This is a holistic admissions intro. It is a case study um, for you at home. This is very par participating uh, type of uh, presentation. So um, I hope you can be here next time. So what we are doing is we are switching our gears into something called holistic admissions. And I could give a whole lecture on holistic admissions, but that would be boring. So instead of a lecture or an explanation, we're gonna explore it through a case study and you will be able to understand how it works by the time you're done. So in this case study, our folks here who have shown up for our session are the admission committee. Congratulations, welcome to your new job as admissions officers. And we are going to present to you a variety of students. So the elements that we're gonna be looking at, you as admission officers here in our case study, um, first of all, when we look at students, we look at it through the lens of a specific college. So each college has their own mission, their own values, their own type of, of um, student body that they're looking to build. Um, each college has their own method of evaluating students. And so we're doing it our way, but every college will do it in a different way. Um, college that use a holistic approach are building a class and need a diverse student body. They need different people. They, they need all kinds, they need the tuba player and then and they need the scientist. So a holistic approach allows us to view the whole student and choose who we want to build our class. Now, we're going to be breaking this down into three parts. We have our academics and that's your grades, your test scores, your course rigor. We're gonna get a, an in-depth look at that in just a moment. And then we're gonna dive into activities and actions. What the thing, what students do while they're in school, what they do with their community, their family, um, and all kinds of other things that they're involved in and they, they are active with. And then we're gonna look at the individual context of each student. So what is their unique situation or their unique circumstances at school and at home? And we're gonna look at this as an admission committee together. Now, for our case study, remember you are the admissions officer. So for our case study, we're looking for students who are academically prepared for a rigorous college education and will also add value to the campus community. We need both of those things. We need folks that are going to graduate and we need folks that are going to make our campus a better place. So you as admission officers, keep that in mind as you evaluate these students and you get to choose who we are going to accept. Heather, take it away. Well, good morning, fellow admissions officers. Welcome to iLead University. We are going to be first evaluating on our applicants' academic performance in their high school. So here you can see we have three students, red, blue, green, and yellow. Um, here is just some basic information regarding their family, where they live, um, what they plan to major in, and what type and how large um, their high school is that they are in attending. Because all of this plays into our admissions decision. So I think we're first up. Um, oh, <laughs> our first up is red, I believe. Yes. Okay. So this is red's transcript. You can see that we have grades from 9th, 10th, 11th, and half of 12th. So as a side note, when seniors are applying to colleges, their initial transcript does not have grades from 12th grade. Um, if they're applying early, the universities are looking at 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. If they are applying regular decision, that typically does include the first semester of 12th grade. So for our admissions purposes, we are looking at um, through the 12th grade fall semester. So you can see red we've got up there. Red is going to major in mechanical engineering. They have a GPA of a 366 weighted to a 377. Um, they have taken the SAT. Um, and have submitted that with their application. So we do know how well they did. Their school offers 16 AP classes and Red has taken advantage of four. 
Are we ready to move on to our next student? I, I wonder if anyone would like to just drop into the chat some. Thoughts. Yeah, what do you think about red? What do we think about their rigor? I, I agreed. What is your basic assumption looking at just this screenshot of their academic performance without knowing anything else about red? What are your initial thoughts um, on admissions? Anyone? Not bad. Admitted person. Interesting. Okay. Anyone else have any thoughts on red? <clears throat> Anything missing? Anything about is weird? Oh, well, interesting. They took late. It late. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess we're ready to compare them to the next one. Yep, let's move on to our next student. So here is student Blue. Blue is planning on majoring in business. These are all the classes. You can see Blue has got straight A's. Um, Blue's weighted GPA is a 448. That's because there are AP classes on here and honors. Um, Blue also looks like has a perfect SAT score. You don't see that too often. Um, Blue's school offers 18 AP classes. Blue took 13. Um, Blue also took six honors classes and one community college class for five credits. Which I'm having, oh, there it is, Cal Calculus. So kind of a, a high level <laughs> community college class. Um, so anybody's thoughts um, on initial, Blue is a go-getter, okay. Go yep. What are the thoughts on Blue? Go ahead and drop some thoughts in the chat because it's really important to kind of share your ideas because mm -hmm. you're the admission committee. You've got a big decision. Right. There's no wrong answers. Their lives are in your hands. <laughs> Tiger parents. Oh, interesting. Do you okay. think it's a, it's a parent or do you think it's it's the student? Rigorous. Very rigorous schedule. Yes. Okay. Can handle a good amount of work. That's true. Perfect SAT balanced with academic and advanced music. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. good catch on that one. Okay. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe a tiger too. Maybe the student's a tiger, <laughs> possibly. Oh, Elizabeth uh, wants to know what else did they do? Well, yes, interesting. That'll come thought. later. We're just right now. We're only looking at academics. It's our first, our first initial evaluation. But that's a good question. Academics. That's a good question, though. But it's a very good question, an uh, extremely good question. Yes. Oh, we got a note that, yes, music throughout, orchestra. Yep. Okay. Let's go and let's check out Green. Yep. Okay. So here's Green. <clears throat> green is going to major in journalism. Green has a weighted GPA of a 4.0, a little bit under for non weighted. Uh, green did not take the SAT or the ACT. We're not sure if his school offers AP classes or how many. Um, just as an FYI, we also do not disclose how many AP classes we offer at iLead. Um, so that is not anything that the learners can be evaluated against. If they take them, obviously they know we have them, but we do not disclose how many we offer. Um, so this student has taken four, three honors classes, and they've done several community college classes. So this, this learner took um, uh, advantage of concurrent enrollment. So any thoughts on green? Nobody has any thoughts on green? Or green. <laughs> I hope there are lots of thoughts on green because green has had an interesting academic. I mean, do we notice anything? Anything obvious? At all obvious? 
Let's look at the transcript. Let's look at let's look at Green's grades. Is there any thing that stands out to you? Specifically in 10th grade. Yeah, what's going on in 10th grade here? <laughs> what's going on in 10th grade? Uh, a blip. So, yes. So as an admissions officer, you're kind of wondering what happened in 10th grade, second semester specifically, and rolled over a tiny little bit into 11th grade. So this is where we're kind of going, hmm, this good thing we do holistic admissions. So we're going to find out eventually what happened with Green in the 10th grade. So any other thoughts on green? Oh, I guess we're moving to yellow. <laughs> All right. So here's yellow. Yellow plans to uh, major in environmental science. You can see yellow's GPA. Yellow also took the SAT, did very well. Um, yellow school does not offer any AP classes. Um, therefore, yellow did not take any AP classes. Honors classes offered two, classes taken two, and then right now community college credits um, are calculus two, planning to take biology two in spring semester of senior year. So also we need to note that yellow has limited access to community college courses. So are we going to count this against yellow? No, well, we shouldn't. So we can only judge the students based on what they have access to. And yellow does not have access to AP. Yellow only had access to two honors classes and very minimal community college. So what are what is our initial thoughts on yellow? Anyone? Did cal yep. Very did very well in calculus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. And I think what Lisa has put in there that yellow is taking advantage of what they have available is kind of a theme we should be looking at. Are the students taking advantage of what they have access to? Right. Actually, when we look at all four of these students, how have they taken advantage of what's available at their school academically? Yellow definitely took advantage of what was available. Okay. Okay. Is it time to vote on who? Oh, oh yeah. So here's just a quick Synopsis of each student. I think we're going to vote now. Uh, I believe we're going to do two admits, one waitlist, and one denial. So you should uh, choose two. You're choose two of who we should admit, who should be admitted into ILEAD University. We've got a lot more people to vote. Please vote, because it really does help with how we continue on with this case studies. Up to seven, we got a few more people. Mm -hmm. So be sure that you're voting in the, the poll. In the poll, in the not poll. just in the chat, but on the poll, because that's where everyone will be able to see the, the results when we're done. Yeah, five more people we're waiting on. Waiting on four more people. We'll see if they're awake and, and alert. <laughs> we could use some voting here. Hmm. Anyone else? We only had 73% participating. Oh, where's the poll? You should be able to see it. It should be on your screen.
Anyone else not able to see the poll? Looks like we've got most people voting. We are still missing. We're missing just three, three more. Three more. Okay. Going once, going twice, ending the poll. And here are the results. Yeah. <clears throat> so who are we admitting this round? Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow. Let's see if you still think that in the next round. So it looks like at this point we are emitting yellow and we're emitting blue. It looks like we are denying red, sorry, red. And it looks like we are waitlisting green, meaning green, we're gonna put them off and we'll figure out later if there's space and red, we're sorry. Red. So sorry, you didn't get in. You didn't get in this round, but you know what? There's more because it's not just about grades and test scores. Um, for our college, I lead university. Now, if this were the CSUs, it is about grades and um, and grades. And so there are some universities that stop at this point. They have looked at the GPA. They have made their decision based solely on grades. But that's not I lead university. And that's not many colleges like the University of California, for example, which we're going to look at at our next case study. <clears throat> but for I lead university, that's the way the first round goes. But let's go to the second round. Perfect. Now, in this particular um, in this particular round, we are looking at the activities and actions of our three students. So we're keeping in mind their GPA, but now we're adding in another element that matters for our holistic. Because remember, we want students that are going to make our campus a better, more active, more interesting place. So we're going to be looking at activities, awards, personal responsibilities such as childcare and things like that that they may have done when they were um, uh, high school students, because that does affect your ability to do other things. We're gonna look at their job, their work experience and community service. So these are the typical things that are listed on an activity section when you are applying to college. And these are things that really are considered, especially with our University of California system, really considered when a learner applies to college that is holistic. So let's take a look at red. Now, remember, up in the um, left-hand corner, we have the information on red that we looked at before. We know red's GPA. We know that there are lower grades primarily in science and math, and she, uh, she had moderate rigor. So with red, um, remember, I, I think it was Halston that might have pointed out that, that APs were kind of started late. There were only four. Um, and red's interested in mechanical engineering. But let's look at let's look and see what red does in reality. So take a look at the screen. Um, you can see we have the way that we list it is, and this is the way it actually is in the application. You indicate how many years you do an activity, you indicate how often you do that activity, and you give some details. So research, we have international level research, the international science fair. And they were a finalist and a regional, meaning probably part of the United States, winner. That's not trivial. That's very significant. They were president or founder of an engineering club where they hosted the meetings. They planned and carried out monthly projects. They were part of the math tutoring club and they were the president in 10th and 12th grade. Um, and it was a decent number of, of middle school students, 30. They were president of the robotics club and state champion. They led the team to a state championship. Once again, that is not trivial. And they got the gold award, which... If you're in Boy Scouts, it's the Eagle. In the Girl Scouts, it's the Gold Award. And they built a ramp for accessibility. So if we don't think about Red's academics yet, and we just look at, at extracurricularly, I don't know if I said that right. What do you think? What do you think of Red? Here's also where we find out that Red is a female. Ah, how did we find that one out, Heather? Well, because of the Girl Scouts. Yeah. That was kind of a clue. Yes. And so I, in my head, they all have genders because I wrote them and then I removed the genders. And so I keep using the, I keep, I keep giving it away. Um, impressive extracurriculars done well, shows leadership skills. Yes. We've definitely got that. Um, longevity. Yes. So longevity, that's a good thing to point out because that is one of the things that is looked at. Is it prolonged? Are you engaged in meaningful activities over a period of time showing, you know, sort of depth? That is something that is identified. Um, yeah, committed to science. Now, here we go. We've got a mechanical engineering student committed to science who is at an international level. 
of ability to do things with their hands and create. Any other comments before we move on to the next student? I'm just curious, put in the chat, has your opinion of Red changed at all? Because we, we kicked her out. We yeah, not. not admit Red. We're Red. And, has and anything changed in your mind? Anything changed. Yeah, it improved, yeah, improved your chances, definitely. Yeah, a little bit of change here suddenly, because remember, it's all about what happens on campus as well. Balanced student. Okay, let's take a look at Blue. Now remember, Blue is our rock star. 1600 SAT, that's the best you can do. 4.0 and 4.48 took all the classes, did all the things, was a Tiger student. Let's take a look at Blue's extracurriculars. Yes, as we pointed out, very involved in music, composed and played his own music, taught himself five instruments. Uh, for the last two years has been playing on the tennis team and digs in the stock market. He likes to do finance. Um, and that, you know, finance, he's a business student. That makes sense. Um, thoughts? Thoughts about Blue? Any, any opinions about, uh, yes, exactly. No leadership. No leadership. What else we got here? Community service. Yeah. Community service. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh? What else do you think? Not many extracurriculars? No. There's some really good observations. Yeah. Especially after seeing red, you know, it's really interesting. Done stock that's related to business. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that that is often looked um, looked at is, is your major matching your actual interests in school? And we can see that this, in, in this case, yes, it is. Any more thoughts before we move on? Curious, has your opinion of blue changed? Just just a yes or no. What do you think in the in the chat box? Ah, interesting. Okay. Is blue, of course, we admitted blue. We did. Looks weaker. Okay. Love it. I love this. I love your guys' thoughts on all this. Yep. Okay. Let's take a look at green. Now, you know how to read this now. I've, I've kind of gone through it. You can um, take a moment to read and, and tell me what you see about Green's activities. Anything jump out at you? Something's jumping out at me. Oh, what is it, Heather? Job. That he works 25 hours a week in 11th what? and 12th grade. Latifa got that too. Job. This is our first student with an actual job, but 25 hours a week is not normal. It's no, high. It's very high. 25 hours a week. Yeah. I don't think that's even allowed. Is it? You guys that, that sign the work permits? Oh. Huh? Yeah. That's an interesting question. Latifa's asking, is he supporting his family? Very good question. What do you think of, of just his personal activities, a social media journalist, the YouTube channel with 400,000 subscribers? Is that normal? No. <laughs> the kid's a poet, goes to open mic night. Yeah, seems like a go-getter. Above and beyond, interesting, yeah. Interviews local politicians, very resourceful. Any leadership? Yep. What do you see? Yep, they're, they're school president. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, we denied, oh no, we waitlisted Green. We so did. let me ask you a question. Has your opinion changed? Yes, yeah, interesting, once you start adding in the things they do, it changes everything. One more to go. This is yellow. What do you see? What are your thoughts? I'll give you a moment to 
to read a bit. Anything standing out for yellow? I had to help the family. We got in a, a, another situation like that. Family farm. Uh oh, Mia, you you're you're you got a problem because you can't like all four. We gotta we gotta cut two of them. Yes, mm. specific and authentic. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything that is at a national or a high level that we should be considering? Anything competitive and interesting? Definitely. Yeah. 11th grade national winner, environmental and natural resources competition representing the state. So that's a high level. Does a student have a job? Yep. Yeah. In, in, in two ways. Yeah, exactly. I agree two, with jobs. two jobs. Two jobs. And here's another question, as Heather pointed out with red, is this student um, male or female? Female. Women in STEM, they have um, in, come involved in that area. And the reason we point that out is in some cases, when you have STEM degrees, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and management, we have a, a, an uneven application pile. And so sometimes there are schools, when you get to places like MIT and Harvey Mudd and those that are um, really trying to make sure they have an even um, student body where that would be noticed because there's not as many women going into um, STEM fields. So this is something that they are allowed to look at and they are allowed to evaluate. I don't know if I lead university, we haven't discussed our evaluation of those types of things, but something just I wanted to point out. So we have now seen all four of our candidates, and now we have two types of things that we are looking at. This over. We have our academics, and now we have the added um, extracurriculars. So take a close look again. Remind yourself of the academics, because remember, we want students who are going to succeed. We need students who are going to graduate. And we need students who are going to make our college a better place on campus. So with those two um, kind of lenses, we're gonna take a vote. Here we go. Yep. Who are we admitting? Pick two. Okay, let me find the poll. It is here, whoops. And let me grab case study round two. Here we go. Choose two. All right. Who are we admitting? Please pick two. Green and yellow. Oh, wow. Getting interesting. Yeah, they can't see what we can see, Heather. We yeah. can oh, yeah. That's just changing. Oh, oh yeah. We God. we see it coming in real, real time. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are up to our 11 from last time. Let's see if our, our missing four show up. Oh, good. Good to hear, Latifa. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Here we go. We have admitted this round. We have changed our minds. Well, no. We, yellow has been on top of the... Yes. Yellow still okay. admitted, but we've now admitted green, kicked blue to the curb, and waitlisted red. And um, I think that blue is always the one that's the most fascinating to me because whenever I run this case study, blue gets admitted the first round and blue is always let go. <laughs> in so, the second okay. round. Sorry, so we'll blue. see what happens to blue yeah. in, the, in the final round. We got a final round. So let me um, stop sharing the poll. Let me take it away. Okay. And then um, we're gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> hand it back over. Right. Rest in peace, blue. Sorry, blue. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, yours, Heather. Okay, so this is where the student speaks. So this is where we get 
context of all of their academics we've already looked at, all of their extracurriculars we've already looked at. So now as our admissions officers, we're gonna be looking at the student's essay, supplemental essays, recommendations from their counselor um, and or teachers and other information that might be added to the application. So here's RED. Again, in the little box, we've got a synopsis of what we've already learned about Red. Um, in Red's personal essay, she discussed her love of engineering and connecting with others. Her supplemental mentions her interest in our mechanical engineering lab that we offer here at iLeadU. Additional information, we find that Red has a learning difference in math. So math is a little bit harder for her um, her counselor lets you know that her disability impacts her performance and course selection. So maybe that's why she wasn't always taking advantage of some of the uh, higher level classes until 12th grade. Um, but she is a good uh, leader and invested in helping others. Her science teacher, glowing, one of the best they've had in her career. So that's an amazing amazing letter um, from the teacher. Um, is there anything that stands out to anybody for red? Now that we have a little bit of context as to why her, her GPA isn't the best and she hasn't always <clears throat> taken rigorous classes. Yeah, learning difference is significant. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Exactly, Latifa. She's overcoming her disability and still winning these competitions. Yes. And Lisa, to your point there, that's exactly what um, the letters of recommendation do, um, specifically from uh, me and Beth, the counselors. Um, those are the things that we write into the letters um, to give context if there's something that that doesn't quite add up. And with Red, we can, I think, all agree that not everything added up. Like if she's so interested and she did all these amazing things and won competitions, why are her grades and her rigor not where they are? So it it does um, it does give us a good place to explain um, why. While we're here, since you are the counselor um, yeah. and we have students that are coming up to this next year, can you talk a little bit about what the student needs to do to prepare for the counselor letter and what you want from them, what you need from them? Yeah, so um, in general, um, when you are applying to universities, not all, um, but a lot, do require a counselor letter of recommendation. So Mrs. Maddox and I put together a survey. It's located in SCORE. If you haven't logged into your SCORE yet, please talk to your EF about getting access. But SCORE is our college um, research tool, essentially, where you can look up different colleges and decide which ones you're gonna apply to and so on and so forth. But in there, we put in a survey that's only available to graduating seniors, but will activate it at the end of 11th grade. So probably around May, we'll probably activate that survey so you could get started on it. Um, once the survey is done, you would schedule an appointment with your counselor. So either Mrs. Maddox or myself will review that with you and until we feel like we have enough knowledge about what you need um, from us, and then we can write that letter. We do require a minimum of two weeks before your due date. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of times learners coming to us the day before Thanksgiving break saying I need a letter and it has to be turned in um, by the Friday after Thanksgiving. Well, that didn't give me two weeks and certainly didn't even give me enough time to write the letter because when we have fall break, which is our Thanksgiving time, or our winter break, which is the three weeks we just had, uh, Mrs. Maddox and I do take that time off and we don't write letters, sorry. 
So just keep that in mind, um, preparing for next year. If you will be applying to colleges that require letters, give us as much time as possible because our job is to make you shine and we would love to have enough time to do that. Thank you, Laura, for my PSA moment. <laughs> okay, so now we're on to blue. Um, he wrote, he, his personal essay just wrote about music and his interest in finance. Um, his supplemental talks about a TV show he's been watching. He doesn't really participate in many on-campus activities. So his counselor didn't have a whole lot to say about him. Maybe he didn't do that survey. I don't know. <laughs> so. Um, Maybe he thoughts? asked the counselor too late. Too late. And yeah, and he or she could not submit that. Yes, that's happened. Okay. So any thoughts on Blue? So we know he's majoring in business, um, attends a, a private school, perfect SAT, amazing GPA, taken very rigorous classes, um, plays music and, and tennis and trade stocks. So anything else? What do we got for Bloom? Only did academics. Yeah, for the most part, you're correct there. Even his extracurriculars weren't too exciting, in my opinion. But I'm only one of, how many of us are there? 19 admissions officers right here, so. You don't get to vote though, Heather, I think, because you're- No, oh, I don't get to vote. get to vote. Yeah. I think we may still have that rest in peace blue going on. Here. I think we might, we might. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Tifa, that's an interesting comment there. Well, he would have had plenty of offerings in a private school. Yes. Like, think about comparing that to iLead where we're really trying to make sure you have stuff because we're you know, <laughs> independent study, but a private school- everything has been handed to blue on a silver platter more than likely. Okay. All right, moving yep. on to our next green. Okay, so here um, green had poor grades in the 10th grade and then started to move up again. So here um, in green's personal um, essay, he talks about losing his home and all of his belongings during a forest fire in California, he had to move to a new city. His parents lost their job and he has been earning money to help his family. So when we were looking at um, his extracurricular activities, we did notice he works 25 hours a week in a restaurant, which is significant. Um, so in his supplemental, he talked about his, his growth in his YouTube channel, which is amazing which, you know, all these things led to his interest in journalism. His counselor um, talks about Green being the only family earner in his um, ability to adjust to his new school. So what's amazing here is now we have a student who is at a new school in 11th grade and obviously has done a great job at getting to know his counselor because a counselor is able to write a good letter um, for Green, even though he or she has only known Green for a very short time. Um, and then for uh, his uh, teacher recommendation, he had a college, college professor write it, which is always a great idea. And especially with our model of independent study, if you or your learners have made a connection with one of their college professors, please know they can use them for their teacher recommendations for these college applications. Okay, any thoughts on green? Just a side note, as I was writing this, in, you know, the, the, this whole thing up, in my head, green came to iLead. That's in my head, that's oh. what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. I could see that. I mean, we, yeah, I could see Green coming to iLead, <laughs> but yeah. You probably wrote his letter of recommendation. I probably did, no doubt. 
shows perseverance, resourcefulness, great personal skills. Yeah, all these things are right. I like that winner, winner, chicken dinner. Love it. <laughs> okay. All right. Now yellow. Um, again, just to recap, environmental science works um, on her family farm, also has a, a paid job working part-time at a hardware store, um, national level award winner in farmers. So um, in her personal essay, she wrote about living on the farm and the life cycle of animals. That's amazing. Her supplement, she talked about climate change and family's livelihood. That's how she got her interest. Um, here's something that's kind of important. She has an hour long commute just to go to school. Um, and that's why her community college is expensive. She hasn't been able to take extra classes. So keep that in mind. An hour is a long time to travel to school. Um, and then her counselor um, recommendation says that she's a first generation, um, or excuse me, first, first student in the states in the school to take advanced math class. Um, because they have run out of ways to challenge her and her teachers say she's a joy, which most of them would say that. <laughs> so any thoughts on yellow? Yeah. She has done well. Anything else? Anybody else have thoughts on yellow? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Are we ready to vote? I think so. All okay. right. So here is um, a synopsis of each of the sections. This is it. There's no more voting after this. Our last vote. So this, this is our final, who gets in and who doesn't. Now in this particular one, you're going to vote twice. There's two questions. The first one is choose two. And the second one is choose one to deny. We're going to kind of look at all that together. So let me bring this up and let's see if I can get the third final round. Here we go. So remember, there's two questions. Who do you want to admit and who should we deny? Only choose one for deny. I think it's pretty obvious who we're admitting, that's for sure. Yeah, the real question goes with, what do we do with that wait list? And, and... I'm sorry, you can't see the poll, Lisa. Can you just maybe answer in the chat who you want to admit, put to? Thanks. I don't know what's going on with the poll. This I don't know either. That's weird. Okay. And then who do you want to deny, Lisa? Deny is going to be the hard one. Blue. Okay. Or blue. Okay. So that means we have 12. That means 13. Um, so all but one. I think we're I think we're ready. Going once, going twice. Perfect. And poll and share the results. So um we have, I think, I think we are admitting green and yellow to iLead University. Looks like it. And it looks like we are waitlisting red. Yep. And um Blue did great academically, but with holistic admission, right? academics is not enough. You know what would be great for Blue? Cal State Fullerton. They have a great <laughs> business program and he would get in. He would he would get into probably all the CSUs without yes. any issue whatsoever yeah. because they really do focus. I just had to say Fullerton because that's my alma mater. So <laughs> it's a it's a fan favorite here. Um, but yeah, so I mean, Blue's going to have plenty of plenty of opportunities, lots of scholarships. There's Blue is not losing out, but for oh, no. holistic admissions, yes, we made Blue on purpose to kind of bring this home. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stop the poll. I am going to go to the next slide so that you can see that we're going to be doing this 
kind of in a similar way. On February 2nd, we are going to be doing this again with our same four folks, but we're looking specifically at the University of California because they have a holistic admissions, but it's different. There's no counselor letters. There's no letters of recommendation. Um, they look at other aspects. There's no test scores. So we're going to run through this with a completely different look and a, look through a completely different lens so we can talk specifically about our university system um, and give you some insight as to what they look for. So once again, we're going to be hitting heavy into the UCs and we are um, going to look again at the individual students and how they're seen that way. So I think this is my last slide. It is. So those of you at home, thank you so much for viewing and come join us next time. It's much more fun. I'm going to stop the recording and say goodbye to those at home.